Thank you, sir, please. Oh, help yourself. Um, we're going to start our meeting, as always, with an invocation. So, Kat, thank you. Father, we thank you for the hearts and hands that have helped build Rotary over the last 119 years. We ask for the strength and spirit to continue to build upon the values and the good intentions of our forefathers. And we ask your blessings upon all the organizations that our efforts tomorrow will support. Amen. And Cap Clegg, saluting our pledge. If you would join me in the pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Pat. We can't be thoughtful as always. I was waiting for some strong jokes this morning. <laughs> All righty, let's go through our announcements relatively quickly here. Let me start with the first one is next week we have a new member induction with three members, and we have an awesome, we have our second awesome speaker, so Jenny today, and next week we have the regional development uh, person. So, you know, Marjean is so excited about this speaker and all the good news and, and interesting news that she'll be bringing to us around regional development. It's a great one to bring a guest. So take a look at, at Aaron's, where's Aaron? Aaron's email about our speaker and everything that'll be coming out this next week. And again, start thinking about who can we bring next week. It is a really informative session. I'm looking forward to that one as well. Um, the, and by the way, here, Georgetown is our VP that'll be taking over programming. From Jean, we're already booking into August for speakers, um, but we do have one opening left this year yet before we get uh, to August, and we'll be filling that pretty soon. But if you have good ideas for speakers, both Peter and Jean are, are, are your people, as well as the committee, the speaker committee has been great and active. Um, there is a membership survey, as we've talked about the last couple of weeks. Kurt Brown stopped in quickly to say that his kids all have the flu, so he can't make this announcement. Um, but we, on Thursday, leap year day, is the close of the member survey. We love, you know, the comments are fascinating, and we're really getting some good feedback. So if you would please just make sure that we've got your feedback as well, that'd be great. And think of, look for that email on the member survey. Uh, the social committee, Luke Thomas. Can <laughs> you send that out? Resend the survey? Yeah. yeah, I can. That sounds great. Yeah, just a, uh, I guess, a final reminder. Just sort of remind me again, but uh, there's a social event at Penn Mechanical next Sunday, March 3rd, uh, for family event. So I think we have about 40 uh, members and their family members uh, joining Penn Mechanical. We'll have food provided, so it's our group to feed, along with uh, all of the games and activities that are included. The uh, reservation is still out there, so I think Mike will probably, my sister will probably yeah. send a call up to see if any of the folks who want to Yeah, great. Thank you. It's busy, busy times. Um, before we get to our polar bear announcement, we have one other one that I know of, Claudia. Hi, I have two things. One is if you've not signed up to be a St. Patrick's Day parade volunteer, please do. We need marshals. You're a city person, you need to march with us. The other thing is we have an opportunity through the city to um, either hear about the Envision Community Plan, which is the forward-looking plan, uh, a 10-year plan on development here in Dublin, or actually participate in it. One would be just to speak a regular meeting, which is fine, and one would be a longer meeting. Um, in which we actually participate in what we want, where we want it, how we want it. It's about building, development, community um, opportunities, entertainment, all kinds of things. Show of hands, quick, Zoomers included. Who would like to do the longer version of the meeting and participate? Hands up. When is it? We don't, it'll be July. Who would like not to participate? <laughs> oh, that sounds great. Actually, I think we would love to give the you know, city the support and the and the feedback, but uh, you got to show hands. So good, great, great, great. Um, 
when Dave Williamson comes in, instead of our usual, yep, there <laughs> ah, I say before our sergeant at arms gets here, <laughs> if we can just do a quick happy birthday song uh, for ourselves. So it's happy birthday for Rotary. It's 119 years that has a plot of that one. Uh, so let's wait until we get done with all that. Yeah, we yeah, 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 can lead it after we get done with all that. <laughs> <our announcements. laughs> That, that was not part of the uh, committee head. Uh, <laughs> hey, good morning, everybody. So snow on the calendar for tomorrow. Everybody see that tonight? So got a got a big day planned for uh, tomorrow. For those that of you, and there's many of you in this room that are volunteering tomorrow morning, I have the list if you need to see it. Maddie also sent an email, I think on Thursday morning. Uh, that shows the, the list with some up-to-date times um, as, as well. So we got over 100 raffle items, um, you know, ready to go. Thanks to uh, Mary and Jim Van Deen, uh, the sweatshirts will be there tomorrow morning. Uh, we got them divided with people's names on them this year and, and sizes for those people that, that turned that information in. So thank you with that. But, uh, you know, we're ready to go. I'm trying to think of anything else. We we still have some raffle tickets available for the golf clubs. Uh, Twenty dollars. We max that out at sixty. Um, I've got the clubs back there. Do you need to inspect them or see them? But other than that, anything else from the committee? That I think we should recognize Paige, who has last year's T-shirt on. Yay! <laughs> this one was a year ago, yes. and uh, we got it. We got a great shirt coming up for tomorrow, right? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, anything else? Okay, look forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning. Pete, it's been such an impressive committee. You guys have just gotten so much done. Your diligence and discipline every Monday on, on this thing. Unbelievable. Do we have any other announcements? All right, well, a little happy birthday then for our usual, not usual, Sergeant. Here. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Rotary. Happy birthday to you, us. Good morning, Rotary. Uh, I have a little week, but uh, let me see here. Get rid of that. Okay. Where's the, I didn't bring the list down with the uh, signing. So we, we do have some guests here. So if you have a guest, hold your hand up. Go ahead and introduce your guest. I have my son, Xavier Prescott. Xavier's here. Xavier heard there was cake and he had to come. Okay. Let's see. I don't think that's it. Other than our speaker. Good. So let me, uh, today's February 23rd. So everybody be aware that uh, it's the 54th day of the year. That means there's 311 to go, which also means what? 306 shopping days until Christmas. So you got it. I'm just trying to give you a heads up here. So you, you're prepared. All right. What happened in this day in history? In 1945, the U.S. Marines raised the American flag over Iwo Jima. So we acknowledge that. But most important, in 1997, Scottish scientists successfully cloned Dolly the sheep. You remember? How much of a big deal that? But for the record, today is also National Hospitality Workers Appreciation Day. So if you see a hospitality worker, appreciate them. It's Curling is Cool Day. Here and that. National Diesel Engine Day. It's International Stand Up to Bully Day, which is a good one. Here's the best one. It's National Rude Day. If so if you're you know you're one of those that like to be a little snob once in a while, today's your day. It is uh, National Play Tennis Day. So they have a lot of stuff for me. National Dog Biscuit Day. World Peace and Understanding Day. But best of all, it's National Banana Bread Day. 
So if you have a little banana bread, you're in, in some. All right, rotary protocol, three things. Your pen, got it? Your name tag, and the car. Now, if you got a car, hold it up. Uh, come on, because there's two parts to this now. All right. Number one's having a card. So if you have a card, you get positive credit for that. However, how many of you gave out a card this week? If you, if you gave out a card this week, you're free from fine. Everybody else owes me a buck. All right. Sergeant at Arms, question of the day. On this day in history, the age old favorite Tootsie Roll was introduced. Question of the day In what year was that? The individual who can guess the year or comes the closest gets five additional tickets. 1905. 1905 is the guess? 38. You're high, actually. No, not yet. <laughs> you are now. Uh, well, I heard 1898. That is high. No. Low. 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 Hi. 96. 96. Who said that? 1896 is the actual year. So congratulations. The, high, the uh, small pot is $20. The large pot is 498 So he gets some extra tickets. Okay, so here we go. Small pot. Yeah. We're going to draw. I'm going to put this down. We usually don't have any trouble with hearing it. We're going to let our speaker draw the middle. I also get one friend and a lot of enemies. Five, four. All right, five, two, three, three. What is five, two, three, three? All right, small or large? Small. Small. We get $20. So you can draw one more. Five, two, one, five. Five, two, one, five. All right. Hey, All right. There we go. Back to you, Mr. Banapro. I always love when you're starting. All of you guys are amazing. All right, very good. Let me uh, let me do a quick introduction for Jenny. You all got the email from Aaron, and as Andy mentioned when he first walked in this morning, it was it's a very robust uh, bio, so I will keep it I will keep it brief. But I will tell you that one of the best things about our district conferences is that every district conference there are great speakers. So whether it's presidents training, or if it's a uh, Rotary district conferences, or the zone conferences. We always have great speakers, very thoughtful topics. And Jenny is always on the agenda. I think it's because she has such beautiful credentials, but also because she has real humility and joy that she brings to all of these discussions. And so Jenny, please know that we're very, very excited about having you here today. Um, you really bring a, a special a special flavor with you when you talk about Rotary. Um, I will just mention, um, I, again, the bio is, is extensive, but the points that I picked out, she volunteers at not just the district level anymore for Rotary, but it actually the zone 30 level as a Rotary coordinator. She is a major donor to the Harris Society, the Polio Plus Society, the Bequest Society, and all the people that live in her house, including the two kids, are all Paul Harris fellows. I, that's the first time I'd seen that. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Jenny's a charter member and a past president of the Rotary Club for Athens Sunrise. She's also a past uh, assistant governor, and she has done a lot of the tools, and Kurt Brown can attest to this. He's seen it, Susan, you've seen it. The whole membership package that Rotary Clubs use worldwide, Jenny had a lot, a lot of 
effort and real strategy around how she built that entire tool for all the Rotary Clubs in the world. Um, and frankly, we use it quite a bit in ourselves. Also in 2022, Governor DeWine named Jenny the first Ohio Youth Ombudsman that, she, that was created specifically because of all of her work for foster children, the Kids Bill of Rights. Um, she was the executive director with CASA, and we had a speaker from CASA, so you all know some of the work that was going on there. But she still frequently speaks about child welfare, trauma, and a big thing for this club as well has been leadership development. Not only membership recruitment, but leadership development in Rotary. And what does that mean? And she does that for the broader state of Ohio as well. In 2018, she was Young Professional of the Year. In 2019, she was Ohio's five under 35. In 2020, she was Woman of the Year in Ohio. In 2021, the Boy Scouts recognized her for Community Leader of the Year. In 2022, she was also a Rotarian of the Year. And that same year, 2022, she had three other awards. Jenny, without further ado, please join us up front. We are so, so pleased to have you as a speaker here in our club. Thank you. Please go around. Okay. How red is my face? <laughs> well, sorry, I come with props. Well, thank you so much for welcoming me and letting me crash your birthday party today. I certainly appreciate it. Um, I stalk your club on social media, so I try to keep up with what you're doing. I was aware you have this polar, this cold golf thing tomorrow. My club is not quite as fancy as yours. We don't golf in the middle of winter. We actually do a polar plunge where oh. we just, um, you know, get dressed in crazy costumes like tutus and we actually jump into a lake. Um, your way seems better. It seems <laughs> smart. <laughs> Perhaps we should get some tips from you on how to not have hypothermia uh, for charities. <laughs> we have some things to learn from y'all. So uh, my home club is Athens Sunrise. That's a club that we chartered um, about uh, eight, eight, seven years ago. Um, I've been a Rotarian for about 10 years, and it is just so much fun. It's so much fun to uh, kind of travel around the world, travel around our district, travel around the country, um, just going and nerding out with folks and talking about Rotary. So I'm not going to do all the work today. Uh, what I'd like to know from all of y'all is why are you a member of Rotary? And I don't want you to say it out loud. Instead, what I want you to do is whip out your cell phone and I'd like you to text it to someone else in the room. So look around, someone in this room, I want you to text them in just a few words why you're a member of Rotary. I always like to do this, that way it just helps my self-esteem. If people are scrolling Facebook, I'll be like, well, they're just following my instructions. <laughs> so it's really, it's for very altruistic reasons. And this doesn't have to be fancy. We're not trying to impress anyone with this. I, I did go to OU for my undergrad. Go Bob Cats. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Sergeant of Arms, you missed a holiday, by the way. It is uh, National Hockey Jersey Day. I'm raising a hockey player, so I was well aware of that today. He asked me why I wasn't going to wear my hockey jersey this morning, and I thought it wouldn't go over well at the office <laughs> there at the Capitol. So, all right, now. Can you just, if you've received a text message from someone in this room, can you raise your hand? All right, what'd you get? To make the world a better place. Make the world better? Okay, how about someone else? Let's hear them all. I know you're all like, man, I'm rethinking what I texted. <laughs> Local good deeds. Local good deeds, okay. As people like you. As people like you? What else? Friendship and service. Friendship and service. The opportunity to give back. Giving back to Dublin community, pay forward all the goodwill the family shown here in Dublin. Yeah, service, taking care of the community, absolutely. Who else? Community service and building relationships. Okay. World peace for my child. World peace for my child. Okay. I see your smiling face on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> see, I think that's what you have friendship. 
Absolutely. Anyone else? Do you want to take any from Zoom? Yeah, anyone from Zoom? Hey, John, Susie. <laughs> okay. 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 All right. Well, I don't want to say that I knew what you were going to say. And the reason that I knew what you were going to say is because I have asked that question to hundreds of Rotary clubs of Rotary districts, and it doesn't matter where I am or what language we're speaking in that meeting, the answer is always the same. People join and people stay because of the good they can do and the people they can meet. It's undeniable. And it's certainly why I've stayed in Rotary. So my next question for you, let's talk about service. Let's break that down just a little bit. Um, talk to me about uh, service projects that you do. Do you do any projects? Raise your hand if there's projects that you do that address food insecurity. Okay, so I heard something you're doing something with the Salvation Army. I heard Claudia had to buy some embarrassing things on Amazon. Um, so you're addressing like sanitation, health, all of those kinds of things. Okay, so you do some food pantry stuff. Uh, what about anything related to housing? You ever worked with Habitat, things like that? What am I missing? What else have you done? How about literacy? Yeah, do stuff with your schools. Okay, so my next question is, why in the heck do you care about that stuff? Why does it matter? Like, why do you care if the kids down the street have enough food to eat? Why do you care if women and children have safe places to live and exist? Why do you care if all the kids in your community know how to read? Like, you know, I'm being kind of facetious there, but no one says you have to care. There's no rule that says you have to care about this. There's no rule that says you have to take care of this. We just do it, right? Because we're Rotarians. And so when I think about why I'm a member of Rotary, it's very simple, right? I, I would say service, it's the people I meet, right? I, you know, got to know Rotarians, you know, who became friends and then later became family. Um, I have one member of my club who I call my Rotary dad. I could not imagine like existing in this world without him in my life. And, um, you know, thinking about all of those things, all of those connections. But when I really unpack that and think, why? You know, why do I care about those things? So I'll tell you a little bit about myself. But for my entire life, I have had and felt this responsibility and sometimes even this duty um, I'm 37 years old. I cannot remember a time in my life when I did not feel this, feel compelled to help people or feel like it was my responsibility, feel like it was something I needed to do. And if I unpack that a little bit with the help of a therapist or two, I really think it's probably tied to my childhood. I think it's, I think I can actually trace it all the way back until I was just a little teeny tiny baby. So you see, I happened to have been born to two people who couldn't and wouldn't raise me. When I was a baby, I was surrendered into the Ohio foster care system. I was one of uh, the abandoned infants of the 80s. So I was placed into a foster home and I was later adopted, but I grew up in a foster home. Um, grew up with hundreds of foster siblings mm -hmm. um, coming and going all of the time. My parents, in fact, my parents that adopted me have been foster parents for about 45 years. Someone told me recently that they fostered about 300 children in those years. Now, the thing is, when you have these experiences as a child, right, when you've survived trauma as a child, you get this kind of firsthand look at just how much someone's life can be impacted by the decisions that other people make just how much your life can be impacted by the behavior of the people around you and the behavior of people that you've never even met. My life was categorically changed, sent into this new trajectory because of the behavior of two people that I don't know, of a person who made a decision that I don't understand, that I will never understand. And so when I think about that, it kind of grew in me this obligation or this kind of sense of responsibility to make good use of the chances and the opportunities that I've, I've had, right? I wanted to make good use of this um, because not everybody has those chances. Not everybody has that hand up that I had. And so for me, I share this story because Rotary became that opportunity for me. Um, through Rotary, I have the opportunity, the privilege really, to take care of the community that took care of me when I needed it the most. So how dare I not do that? And so, 
Rotary has kind of become uh, the vehicle by which I can carry out what I think is important, what the type of person that I want to be. And it's what I've come to lovingly call Rotary Happy. Now, Rotary Happy is just my very silly way of summing up how I feel about our great organization, how I feel about myself for being a part of it. And the roads that bring us all to Rotary are very different. The road that brought me to Rotary is very different than Ron's, it's very different than Susan's, it's very different than Pete's. And that's, that's okay, that's what makes our organization so good. Um, and I hope that each of us here in this room today kind of takes some time to think about what brought you to Rotary, but then think about what that means to you. Why is that important to you? That's all Rotary Happy is. It's not complicated, folks. I'm not a complicated person. It is uh, just that simple. It's a positive and impactful membership experience that fulfills you in some way. And that's why when Rotary got a little bit tough for me, and it did for a while, I did not give up on Rotary. When I first joined Rotary, I'll tell you, I loved it. Like I was just, it was like magic. It's like, there's this entire organization that stretches across the entire world and it's full of over a million people who care about the same thing as me. How dang cool is that? That's just cool. Um, you know, and so I settled in, I really loved it. I got involved. And as I settled into my club that I joined, it's not the club that I'm a part of now, uh, some of that luster started to fade away just a little bit. And I'll tell you, some of my early experiences in Rotary were not very happy at all. Um, and, and sometimes it was the membership experience that I wouldn't wish on anyone. Some of those early experiences when I joined Rotary felt a lot like betrayal. Like this wasn't what I signed up for, right? I didn't sign up for unwritten rules about where to sit. I didn't sign up for kind of quiet point keeping about who was doing more or less. I didn't sign up for passive aggressive remarks if you dared to miss a meeting. I did not sign up for incredibly inappropriate comments about women and what they were wearing and what kind of choices they were making. I didn't sign up for any of that. That's not the rotary that I signed up for. I felt a little bit tricked actually. And I'll tell you, speaking up as a woman in that environment did not feel safe. So why didn't I just quit? That's a question my husband asked me often during that time. Why don't you just sit? <laughs> uh, but you see, I couldn't quit because Rotary, without me even realizing it, had become a part of the, Rotary, the real Rotary, not that nonsense I was dealing with, but the real Rotary had become a part of who I was. So I, I couldn't quit. But what I could do is I could quit that club. And I wasn't the only one that quit that club. And on the very first day of the first meeting that I would have missed in several years, I texted two other women who had similarly left and said, you know, we've been having breakfast together on Thursdays for a long time. Let's just meet in the coffee shop. Let's just grab coffee. So we did. And the next week, someone heard we were having coffee and said, oh, can, can I join you? I said, of course, of course. And then a few more people joined the next week and then a few more people. And by the end of the month, we had a couple dozen people meeting for coffee in the back room of this funky little coffee shop. We started to look like a Rotary Club. We started to act like a Rotary Club. We probably started to smell like a Rotary Club. And so we chartered um, our little Rotary Club. We chartered with just 26 uh, new members. And we have now kind of gone from this small group of people meeting for coffee to an incredibly vibrant, dynamic, welcoming, and goofy club, right? We jump into lakes when it's really fun. <laughs> so we're, we're a bit of a goofball club, but um, we've built this amazing thing for our community. Um, as Ingrid mentioned when she was introducing me, I served as our club's uh, second president. So I was a charter member and one of our early presidents. And during that year, I had the honor of welcoming a new member every other week for that entire year, 27 new members uh, that joined our club, which is actually not the part that I'm most proud of. What I'm most proud of is 100% of our membership, both, both new and existing members were engaged in service and we had 100% retention. It was what I was most uh, proud of during that year. And when we were building this new club, the sky was the limit, right? Like we could build it any way we wanted. We could be creative with it. And it would have been really easy for us to blame everything that had happened on one person or a small group of people, right? It would have been easy for us to do that. And instead we intentionally, now we did some belly aching in the beginning, right? There was some vent, healthy venting that happened in the beginning. And then finally we said, you know what? This is not what we want our club to be about. 
We don't want to be running from something. We want to really examine where the weaknesses, where the vulnerabilities in the system of that club, right? Where were those vulnerabilities and how, how was it allowed to kind of build to the level that it did when we finally all walked away? And we wanted to build a club intentionally that would safeguard us against those things. We knew that the passive aggressive remarks, the point keeping, all of those things, those little tiny kind of sentinel behaviors that can build up and lead to more toxic dynamics. We basically said those will have no place in our club. Um, and we did that with a lot of intentionality. Now there were there are bumps along the way, but I think the way we built the club allowed for us to have incredibly honest and dynamic and sometimes difficult conversations with one another because we wanted to be as welcoming and as inclusive as possible where everyone matters, where everyone's contributions are seen as valuable. And so, you know, we were essentially talking about our club experience, our membership experience. We wanted something that was engaging and welcoming and inclusive. And that's what I have come to call Rotary Happy. So what can you learn from this story? You know, like when I think about why do I tell this story to people? Why, why is Rotary International interested in this story? So I think we're all hearing that we've got to grow membership. Did they say something to you about that, President Miller? Yeah. Something about that. Something? Yeah. yeah. Think on every slide. I think <laughs> you've maybe been to a webinar that we're supposed to like be growing Rotary, right? In North America, where we have a little bit of a membership. Um, and, you know, I don't want to use the word crisis because I work in government, but we have a little bit of an issue. Um, it's something we're looking at. That's what we say in government. <laughs> um, so we're all hearing that, and that can seem really scary, right? That's that's kind of frightening. That's kind of intimidating, and it and it is if the only goal is net pro net positive growth. If that's it, if that's all we're doing, um, then that is really intimidating. Um, and I'm a, a assistant coordinator for uh, Zone Thirty, so I. I can't say just don't pay attention to the data. So you, you pay attention to the data, use it as a guide, understand the trends, understand um, what your strengths are as a club, understand what, where the vulnerabilities lie within membership, where those opportunities for growth really are, but really focus on the membership experience for yourself, for the people to the left and the right of you in this room, for the people who aren't in this room, and really put your energy into that kind of an experience. I have been encouraging clubs around the world to build club cultures that really are rotary happy. Um, we all have this opportunity to uh, impact not only our own experiences by what we give, what we pour into our experiences in rotary, but also what we give to the people around us. We have a, some really amazing opportunities. And again, remember people join and stay in rotary because of the good they can do and the people they meet, the people they work alongside. We know that. So, you know, how we interact with one another, what we bring to the table is critically important. So when I say, you know, I think this member experience, I think really investing in that experience is one of the best tools that we have. I'm gonna prove it to you. I have another story for you. So a handful of years ago, I purchased an electric kettle. An electric kettle is actually this one. <laughs> um, so I purchased this electric kettle. Before that, I did not have one. Um, if I needed to heat up water, I would just like put a pot on the stove, uh, which apparently is like what cavemen did. Uh, <laughs> so I, I bought this kettle. I did research. I wanted to, you know, I'm a frugal person. I grew up in the throes of poverty eating government cheese. So I, you know, I'm a frugal person. I was not going to drop serious coin on this kettle. So I did some research. I wanted it to be efficient. I wanted it to match my kitchen spread. I wanted to match my kitchen. Um, so I bought this kettle and y'all, it has been the answer to every kitchen problem I never knew I had. I use it every single day. My kids use it. Like, I used it before I came here. I use it every single day. Um, my kids use it. My family uses it. And during, like, lockdown, when I was spending more time at home than, than typical, I realized I have an electric bill now. I can make French press coffee. It'll be so easy. I can make pour-over coffee. I got one of those really fancy glass ones. And, you know, I got all this, you know, bougie coffee accoutrement <laughs> and then you know I, I'm a DIY one of my uh toxic traits is that I tend to overestimate my carpentry skills um so I uh 
I told my husband that I was gonna repaint our cabinets in our kitchen because I thought that would be something fun for me to do during lockdown. And he came home one day and I had demoed the entire kitchen. Like I'd taken up the floor. Um, <laughs> uh, so it was kind of this like renovation that spiraled a little bit. And mind you, I overestimate my skills. So 500 trips to Lowe's later, got my kitchen remodeled. A um, little over budget. Uh, so at the end, I had this eight foot space, a kind of empty space in my kitchen. And I was like, looked online. I saw something on Wayfair, this eight foot long little buffet table. <laughs> That'd be great. But it was like a thousand dollars. So I was like, I can build that. <laughs> so eight trips to Lowe's later and about $800 worth of specialty tools that I had to purchase. I have my eight foot coffee bar in my kitchen and it's all because of that kettle. I would not have done that. So I, I like really do use it every single day. Now, for those of you that are like, well, this is a cute story about the kettle, but why in the hell is she telling us this? <laughs> Where is she going with this? So let me connect the dots here. Within exactly one week of owning that kettle, I bought a second one. I took it to my office because I knew my coworkers were going to like it. I just told you how it spiraled into me, like reorganizing my kitchen and making my husband question why he's been married to me for the last two decades. <laughs> and uh, I actually, in fact, one of my coworkers, she liked it so much. She bought herself one. She used it at the office, bought one for her house. I have given this as a gift to, I don't know how many people. Like, if you invite me to your wedding, you're getting a cuddle. You invite me to your housewarming party, you're getting a cuddle. You tell me that your kid is graduating from high school and going to college and living in a dorm, I'm getting him a cuddle. <laughs> I have talked about it to, I don't know, hundreds if not thousands of people by this point. So why am I doing this? Does anyone think that I get kickbacks? <laughs> like, do you think it's like a pyramid scheme? Like, if I buy a kettle and I get you to buy two kettles and then you get her to buy three kettles, like, I am, like, the kettle conglomerate. Does anyone think that's what's happening? Does anyone think I secretly own the kettle company? And I'm just out here peddling it. Does anyone think, like, I'm a major stockholder or something in this kettle? No. No. I get nothing in return. Like, nothing material in return. I like it. I found it useful. It fulfills some need of mine and some needs I didn't know I had. And I just want to share that with other people. I just want to share it with people. So when someone says, oh, I got that same kettle that you told me about, right, I get a little boost. So we as human beings are biologically programmed to connect to one another. To connect to one another. So when we observe someone that we care about experiencing happiness, it has a biological impact on us. In fact, we can have little boosts of serotonin and dopamine. Those are like, think of them like helpful brain chemicals that help us feel pleasure and joy. So how many of you have been to a new restaurant in the last year? New restaurant in town? Cool, thank you for supporting local businesses. Um, now, those of you that went to that new restaurant, how long did it take you to tell somebody about that new restaurant, if it was good? A day. A day, yeah. You said, you gotta go there, you gotta get the halibut, you gotta get this, you gotta get the bronzino, you gotta go do this. Um, why are you doing that? Do you get something back from the restaurant? No, you just want to share your good experience with someone. You want them to have the same good experience that you did, right? And when they come back and say, yeah, that, Ingrid, that restaurant was amazing, spot on, good recommendation, right? They get a little bit of pride. It's like thinking about how many of you have ever known a little tiny human, like a child? <laughs> like a, like a, a child or a grandchild or, you know, a niece or a nephew. Have you ever noticed how excited the, the grown-up humans get when the tiny humans take their first steps. Like you would think that they invented walking. <laughs> we are so excited for them. Like, oh my gosh, they're walking. Um, but right, it's this. We're we're proud of them. We experience happiness when we watch them have success. Right, we want that for them. We kind of crave that, and then we can kind of create this feedback loop within ourselves, and we can do that constantly. Now, I am not suggesting that rotary is like a kettle. I think we're a little more complicated than a kettle. Maybe not, but a little. What I am suggesting is that we just apply what we know about human behavior to rotary, right? All this, all this talk about how we're kind of biologically programmed to connect to one another. Let's apply that to how we build rotary clubs. Let's apply that to how we grow our rotary clubs. Because let me tell you, I just spent the last, what, seven minutes talking about a kettle. 
Can you imagine how much I talk about Rotary? <laughs> so let's apply that knowledge and that framework to the work that we're doing in Rotary. Let's apply that, right? We all have a responsibility to one another and to the communities that we serve, because I hate to tell you, this club doesn't belong to any one of you. It doesn't belong to your president. It belongs to the community that you serve. I guess technically it belongs to Rotary International since they hold your charter, but I think I'm just required to say that, but it actually uh, belongs to the community, right? right? So we have a duty, a responsibility to build a club that's responsive to our communities, that reflects our communities, and that's there to take care of our communities. And you know that that partners with other with others in the in the organ in the community to be able to take good care of the neighborhoods around us. So, what I ask you to do is to just simply think about why you joined Rotary. Now we already said service fellowship, but unpack that a little bit more. Why do you care about those things, and why is Rotary the vehicle that you choose to do those things? And then just simply be brave enough to share that story with other people. It's okay to get nerdishly and embarrassingly excited about being a member of Rotary. It's okay to nerd out. It's okay to post too much on Facebook or Instagram about Rotary. It's okay, right? Talk to people about Rotary. I think you were talking about giving out cards. Find those opportunities in your life where you can connect with people and pull them in to this experience that means so much to you. So. I, I think there's some time for questions. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, two more. Okay. Um, but thank you so much um, for letting me come and share some Rotary Happy with you all today. And I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah. My question is um, very simple. With Rotary, we know we can conquer the world, right? If you are a member of, of our government, of the state of Ohio, how Rotary Happy have you made the government? <laughs> well, you know, I'll tell you over and over, more and more of my uh, my coworkers are becoming Rotarians, uh, but I love opportunities when I can collide my two worlds. Um, this past year, focusing on mental health and Rotary has been one way where I've been able to really collide um, these two these two worlds. But wouldn't it be great if uh, Rotary Happy was just infecting everyone? <laughs> yeah. Well, Jenny, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> It was not by accident that we asked Jenny to come and share the story while we're also doing the membership survey. It meant rearranging a number of speakers. Gene Oliver and John Susie were not happy with me, but we started thinking about why it was so important to have their survey. And why it was so important is because I had the sort of opposite experience. I got to this club and I loved it and have stayed and stayed and stayed because everyone here was so terrific. We got over some of the points things or some of the other little things or, or couldn't always be here because I had some travel commitments for work. But everybody was supportive. Everybody was wonderful. Nobody let anybody else fail. I think it was Dave Benz who actually said that the first time I heard it, one of our board meetings, Rotarians don't let Rotarians fail, right? Dave? Right. So like again, it, it was not by sheer luck that we happen to have Jenny here. She was a great speaker at several different things, but it's the energy, it's the excitement. It's the great club that we have, and we want to continue to have and continue to grow that's behind the introduction to Jenny to be at the, at the meeting today to say, let's go share all the goodness that we have and feel, and let's go have a great golf outing tomorrow. Thanks for a good meeting, guys. See you. Yeah, 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 yeah